Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Glev Zaborski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And today we'll talk about those evil, evil workers, remote workers who are working two full-time remote jobs. You've heard about them, haven't you? There have been a lot of headlines about such remote workers. The Wall Street Journal had a headline saying that people who work from home have a secret. They have two jobs. The Guardian had a headline saying white collar workers with two jobs is the biggest open secret out there. Bloomberg said that many remote workers secretly juggle two full time jobs or more. So here's a typical structure of such articles. There's usually a remote worker who's quoted who explains how they manage to secure a second job working remotely and the additional income makes the additional hours worth it. There's lots of dramatic escapades about how they manage to avoid getting caught and usually a cautionary tale of a worker or two who are found out and fired. Now, these articles feed into our narrative fallacy, which is a cognitive bias, a mental blind spot that leads us to see the world through stories, not facts and data. Stories can be useful as illustrations of broader patterns in the data, but they speak to our feelings and intuitions without regard to the evidence. They don't show whether the stories are representative of the data or exceptions to the rule. Here's another mental blind spot to be aware of, the availability bias. The stories feed into our availability bias, which is a blind spot that causes us to rely on information that's easily accessible in our memory, like those full-time remote job holders who have two full-time jobs. And such salience of these stories occurs because the articles arouse our emotions, the feelings of unfairness, of how could they work two full-time jobs. And they're especially stimulated by the crime-like elements, the dramatic escapades uh, that where the workers avoided getting caught or got caught and got fired. And here's another mental blind spot called the confirmation bias. So if executives and board members often talk about these two full-time, about these remote workers who have two full-time jobs. And this is a type of confirmation bias, which is a cognitive bias that seeks information confirming existing beliefs, regardless of whether it actually matches the facts. So executives tell such stories. I've heard such stories repeated time and time again when I observe them in C-suite meetings, board meetings, when they call me and talk to me about, well, I don't want to let my workers work remotely because they're going to have two full-time jobs. I've heard this all before many, many times. And what I do is I tell them to look at the actual data. So let's take a look at the Federal Reserve Economic Data. That's FRED. You've probably heard of it. The FRED's goals, the Federal Reserve Economic Data, is to provide the most accurate information possible. They don't have a bias. Their goal is to help everyone from the Federal Reserve to startup founders to the leaders of large companies make good business decisions, thus maximizing government revenue through taxes. FRED has no interest in promoting in-office hybrid or remote work. It's just objective, clear data. So let's take a look at data on multiple job holders in the US workforce, which we get from W2 data and so on, and from tax data of various sorts from self-employed data. So Fred's research indicates we're at a historically low point in employees holding multiple jobs. The high point was actually around 2000, when 5.8% of all workers held multiple jobs. Currently, only 4.8% have multiple jobs. And just before the pandemic, 5.2% had more than one job. What about multiple job holders with two full-time roles? So we have data from Fred that encompasses both full-time and part-time jobs. July 2022, 438,000 workers held two full-time jobs, accounting for 0.27% of the total working population in the United States, which at that time was 163.5 million. July 2000, there were 418,000 workers holding two full-time jobs, which accounted for 0.3%. So compared to 0.27% now of all US workers holding two full-time jobs, there was 0.3% in July 2000 because the workforce was large, 138.8 million. So there were a total of 418,000 workers who had two full-time jobs, but a smaller workforce. Now it's 488,000, but a larger workforce. So totally, in total, a smaller proportion of the workforce holds two full-time jobs now 
then held them in July 2000 with very little remote work. So we're not at a historically low period of workers holding two full-time jobs, but near average. Now, so what's the reality of remote workers with two full-time jobs? Headlines suggest it's common for them to have two full-time jobs. Stanford research shows that pre-pandemic, 5% of all workdays were remote. Now it's 30% of all workdays. So it's a six-time increase. So instead of remote staff taking two full jobs due to more work time being remote, now it's not due to a higher proportion of double job holders. So it's just that there were double job holders and the jobs transformed into remote jobs rather than in-person jobs. That's why we have more remote workers holding full-time jobs because there are more full-time jobs altogether, not because remote workers are super actively going out and seeking two full-time jobs. That's incredibly rare, as we see from the data, the objective data from Fred. So breathless headlines, like from the Wall Street Journal, ignore the probabilistic base rate. And that's a mental blind spot, a cognitive bias called base rate neglect. It's a cognitive bias that focuses on individual anecdotes and stories instead of the statistics of the research. So research, find that, research finds that employees work only 36 to 39% of the time when they're in the office. The rest is spent on things like reading social media and news websites, making non-work calls, looking for or working other jobs. So even in the office, they can be working on other things. They're not all that productive. In fact, we have a lot of research showing that hybrid workers are the most productive workers. So trust your staff. A Citrix study shows that workers working on site trust their employees less compared to remote workers. If mutual trust is absent, the staff will disengage. And we definitely see that remote capable employees who are forced to work on site full time are less engaged than full time remote workers. A Gallup survey shows that 45, 54% of remote workers will look for other jobs if the remote work option is taken away. So more than half of all workers want to work less than three days a week on site. And let me tell you about a case study from one of my clients, the Information Sciences Institute, which is a research institute at the University of Southern California with over 300 staff in artificial intelligence and cybersecurity and other information technology. So this institute announced a three-day in-office policy in early fall of 2021, but that's when they started consulting with me and they shifted from that policy to a trust-based team-led model in late 2021 which means individual teams determined what days of the week, how often, for what purpose they go into the office. And there's a lot more flexibility overall for people to choose when to go into the office. So they decided at the team level what works best for each team. And we did some surveys at ISI showing that in about a year, just under a year, in August 2022, so this started in late 2021, and August 2022 survey shows that 73% of staff believe that the team-led model is much better. 15% believe it's better for a total 88 preference for a team-led model over a three days a week in the office model. When asked in the survey, would you recommend peers to work at the Information Sciences Institute, 56% said the team-led model makes it much more likely that they would do so. 18% said it would be more likely for a total of 74% who are more likely to recommend a team-led model. So strongly consider adopting a team-led model for your team over something like three days a week in the office and doing away with these beliefs in this false idea that remote workers have two full-time jobs in any significant extensive numbers. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Wise Decision Makers show. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you checked out the show and leave a review. It helps others discover the show and it helps us improve the show.